It was warm and sunny out, a day just like one would expect for that time of year. There was a calm, gentle breeze that broke the intensity of the sun. It was, by all accounts, a perfect day. All of a sudden, out of the corner of an eye, the calm was shattered. When George looked at the picture he had just made, he knew something was wrong. He couldn't be sure what it was, but, frankly, it didn't matter. All that mattered was that there might have been something out there. George's hands were shaking as he slowly reached into the water. He knew he had seen something in the background of that picture, but he never expected it to be still here when he returned. His wife, Lise, was screaming to him to just leave it alone and get the hell out of there. She did not want to get involved with whatever this was at all. But George was not about to just turn his back after going through all the effort to return here. But when he finally managed to get it on the boat, all hell broke loose. George did not even know if they would make it back to shore now. But what did George spot floating in the water? Why did he want to return for it? And why did it cause him so much trouble? George was pushing the motor of their little speedboat to go as fast as it possibly could. He needed to get to the exact spot where they had seen something floating. They had a feeling it might be something bad. Maybe it was still in the water. At first, it was difficult to determine exactly where they had been, and George started to panic. Maybe they were too late. Lisa was still utterly confused as to what was happening. All that George had wanted to share till now, what that there had been something in the water here. They turned the boat and started their search. They circled through the large lake doing their best to spot locations they had passed. He motioned towards the place they had been before while keeping an eye out for anything odd. After a few hours of searching, the couple was close to giving up when something happened. The couple slowed to a halt when Lisa spotted something in the water. There was a slight bump in the water. They swerved the boat and made their way to the spot. They were both anxious to know what it would be. While they got closer, George killed the engine so they could carefully reach their destination. It was quiet, and they weren't sure anymore if this was a good idea. The couple had read stories of fishermen coming in contact with sharks and whales. The object in the picture had been so smudged they didn't know what to expect. Closer they got, the more visible the object became, but it was still unclear what was going on. George tried to look in the distance at what it could be, and he saw long brown hair, and he thought he even saw arms and legs. What could the strange figure be? Closer they got, the darker the hair seemed, and the larger the object in the picture appeared. The couple could feel their hearts pounding. They knew that weird things happened at lakes, and hoped that it wouldn't be a body. Closer they got, the more anxious they felt, but soon they would be in for a big surprise. The boat stopped, a few feet from the spot, and Lisa peered on to get a closer look. What she saw surprised her. Lisa laughed. <laughs> it's just a stuffed toy. She breathed a sigh of relief, finally feeling a little less frightened. She turned to George and smiled. Let's leave. It's just a toy. But George wasn't so sure. George wanted a better view of the object and to confirm for himself. Although Lisa felt more relaxed, George couldn't budge the feeling inside that told him something was wrong. He walked towards the edge of the boat to get a closer look. A second later, Lisa heard George scream, It's alive. I saw arms moving. We have to go there and rescue it. Couple was shocked as they both ran back to the dock of the boat to get a closer look. It was clear now that whatever was in the water wasn't human, but what could it be? They saw the animal floating on a large piece of wood. That's why it had not drowned yet. They needed to make sure the animal was saved. Even though the animal was floating on a big piece of wood, they saw it was still struggling to stay on top of it. They had to act quickly. They noticed it was pretty big and wet, so they knew this was going to be very heavy. They were unsure of what they would do. They had never rescued anything from the water but they knew they had to be quick. They put their sail down, stretching the rope to the board that held the animal on it. 
After a few attempts, the couple was able to make contact with the wooden board and slowly pulled it towards the boat. Carrying the animal slowly onto the boat, they stared in shock. It was a large dog from the looks of things. They wondered how the animal had made it so far into the large lake. They were strangers to the area and not certain how to contact the authorities. Touching the animal, they could see it was cold. They feared they might have been too late. They placed the dog in the center of the boat. Lisa made her way inside to find as many blankets as she could to warm the dog up. George immediately called a friend who was a vet for some assistance. The couple waited together, both hoping that the friend would have some needed advice. Once his friend picked up, George shared the story with him, detailing how they had spotted the dog in the picture and gone back to rescue it. The friend listened and then offered advice. He explained that they would need to watch the dog's temperature and find something edible for it to eat. They thanked their friend and made their way back to the dock. They had been debating what to feed the animal when they saw that the problem had resolved itself. There on the dock was the dog eating the fish that Lisa had caught earlier on. George mused. He had not known dogs ate fish. They wondered if they had really picked up a large dog or something else. However, the couple did not focus on that. They were simply glad the dog was awake, but he seemed very tired. They decided they would care for the dog until they made it back on land. The days went by quickly, and soon the dog was getting better and stronger. Lisa already had an idea. We should keep it. You know, I'd love to have a dog. But George wasn't certain yet. The longer they spent with the dog, the less like a dog the animal seemed. George made a deal with Lisa. They would research the dog first, and if everything turned out fine, they would take it back with them. He was intrigued by the dog that seemed content to eat fish and sleep all day. George decided to send the picture of their new pet to their vet friend for some clarification. In the meantime, the dog and Lisa were fast friends. Spending their time together, Lisa would fish and give the smaller catches to the dog, and the two would cuddle in the evenings. For Lisa, the vacation was going even better than she could have imagined with her new companion by her side. Finally, George got a reply from his friend. His friend could not be certain, but he believed based on the size and color of the fur that the dog was a Tibetan Mastiff. This news put Lisa at ease, as she was glad to confirm it was a dog, but not George. He knew how big those dogs can get. The couple had a decision to make. They only had a few more days till their vacation ended, and it was time for them to decide if they would be keeping the pet or not. George decided the dog could stay for now, but they would have him checked out at the vet when they came back because he wanted to be sure that the dog was healthy and that they could take care of it. So when they returned home, George immediately called a vet who said they could come by his clinic in three weeks. He gave them a few tips to care for the dog up until the visit. Couple was grateful but soon noticed that there was something strange about their new pet. Lisa, who had a few more vacation days than George, decided to spend it with her new pet, but she began to notice some strange behavior from the dog. At first, she thought their new pet was having difficulty adjusting to a new region, but it was soon clear that something was odd and their dog was different from others. They noticed that the dog was incredibly hungry. It managed to consume two buckets of pasta and a full box of fruit every day, and it liked every single type of food. They knew that the animal had to be hungry, but they had never seen a dog that could devour so much at once. But that wasn't all. Not long after they arrived back, they noticed that the dog barked weirdly. They had looked up videos of mastiffs barking just to be certain, but the noise that the dog made was completely different. In fact, it hardly sounded like barking. It had started as small echoes, but as the nights went on, it became even louder. The dog sounded much more like it was screaming. They worried that their neighbors would soon complain if the noises got any louder and hoped that the trip to the vet would clear everything up. But they also knew that they were dealing with a special breed, so they put their concerns aside 
and continued to lovingly care for the cuddly pet. Until the next day, he did something incredible. Both Lisa and George had now resumed work and were always eager to return home to play with their new pet, which seemed to increase in size daily. But on this day, they couldn't believe their eyes. Dog could stand. They had never seen that before. None of them had tried to teach the animal this. Finally, the day of the long-awaited visit to the vet came. But from the moment they walked in, the vet looked puzzled. He asked them to give him a moment. He had been documenting the different habits of the dog and working on his own research. So when he came back, it was with shocking news. The vet said, I'm sorry, but this is not a dog. The couple stared at each other, then at the vet. They didn't understand what he meant. If their pet wasn't a dog, then what was he? You brought home a bear. They couldn't believe their ears. What should they do now? They were both shocked at the news. What would this mean for them? And was it legal to have a bear as a pet? The vet smiled. He explained that these questions were out of his expertise and gave them the number of an expert to get in touch with. It took a few weeks before they were able to schedule an appointment with the expert. He explained that although they could keep the bear for a short period once it grew to a certain size, it would become too dangerous for a residential area. The couple was left with two choices. They would have to either return the bear back to the wild, which could endanger the now domesticated bear, or they could try and transfer it to a zoo. The couple decided the safest option was to move it to a zoo. After a few weeks, it had grown a lot and weighed almost 250 pounds. And it was now time for the couple to say goodbye to their new friend. After the bear was moved to the zoo, the new couple was given passes to visit the animal whenever they wanted. Lisa and George visited the bear very often. They felt like they still had a special bond with the bear. After all, he had lived in their house for a few weeks, and they liked him a lot.